To keep myself and all of you entertained until Elden Ring drops, I've decided to play through all of Dark Souls 3 as Artorius. <laughs> Every enemy is tripled and I'm playing on max new game difficulty, eventually leading to the finale where I take on the game's final boss, Three Gales. Hey, welcome back everyone. Before I get into the run, I want to tell you about a challenge I just posted on my community tab a couple of days ago. I'm challenging all of you to make as many souls as you can from a brand new account in one hour. No new game plus. The person with the highest unused soul count at the end of the hour will win $500 USD. The complete list of rules are in the video's description, please read them, but to answer you'll need to submit a one hour unedited clip to my business email and give me permission to use the footage. The reason I need permission is because I'm planning on making a video highlighting the strategies y'all came up with and revealing the winner. The deadline is November 18th noon pacific time. so. Feel free to leave any questions you might have below. As you already know, I read every single comment and yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing your entries. As far as this run goes, the goal of this episode is to take out the Curse Rod at Great Woods, the Fire Demons, and make it to the Road of Sacrifices. While neither of these bosses are required to beat the game, for the sake of content, I'm gonna go ahead and take them out anyway. This means that we'll need to make it through the Courtyard, the Graveyard, and defeat the three boreal knights guarding the entrance. Let's see how this goes. The thralls in the house don't really pose a threat, but the peasants in the courtyard might. As I turn the corner, I discover that they've all left their posts and are quickly closing in. I do end up getting hugged, but thankfully they're a respectful bunch and seem perfectly content just watching me fight the evangelist. A few swings of my sword and some acrobatics later, and I'm able to clear a path through the horde so that I can fight them out in the open. The most threatening thing about this section is the evangelist's ability to inflict bleed, which does a sizable chunk of damage to Artorias, and if I somehow get hit by all three, then the damage adds up fast. Fortunately, that's not the case, and after finishing off those guys, I head into the house adjacent to the alleyway. Nothing noteworthy happens here, just a bunch of creepy looking cage hollows being creepy, so I jump into the alleyway to take on the three evangelists that are waiting for me. The confined space really plays to their advantage, and the fact that they drop down one at a time makes it really hard to take them out quickly, so they're able to accumulate a bunch of bleed on me. A big leap finishes off the last thrall, and I head over to the next section. Remember in the last episode when I mentioned that every NPC including phantoms are tripled? Well, that includes invaders, so Moundmaker Hodrick is also tripled, and if you're familiar with the Moundmakers then you know that they can actually attack any phantom, so the first thing they do is start attacking each other. As we make our way through this run, I'm expecting, or more so looking forward to, seeing a lot of really weird yet interesting interactions like that. Since they're fighting each other, there's really no need to interrupt them, so heading into the graveyard, the scores of hollows are not too problematic, and I'm able to pick up the mortician's ashes pretty easily. We're gonna need these in order to buy the grave key so that we can rescue Irina and gain Egon's favor. When I make it to the Greatwood fight, the first thing I notice is that there aren't three, and to be honest, I'm not entirely sure what happened to the third one. It's very possible that he either died or just didn't load in, and that's okay because I'm fairly certain my game would have crashed if he were here given the sheer amount of hollows in this fight. For Artorias, this fight is relatively easy. I don't even really need to roll to avoid the butt slams, and my greatsword's long reach makes hitting the sacks essentially target practice. For some reason, going into the second phase, the second Great Wood doesn't survive the fall, and that's when I noticed that we had surprise visitors. Cirrus. Going back to the tripling of NPCs, these guys are no longer hidden, they're all just present on the maps that they would normally inhabit at some point in the game, so now I have to deal with two Cirruses. Cirruses. Cirrus I? Fortunately, Cirrus and the Great Wood are not on the same team, and I decide it's probably best to focus on the tree first and let Cirrus get caught up in the crossfire. After about 5 minutes of fighting, the Great Wood finally falls and I warp out to make a pit stop at Firelink. 
Once I'm there, I buy a grave key from all three handmaids, and when I make it to the bridge, a well-placed spin attack sends them flying. This is when things start to get bad. These pot-wielding hollows are some of the only NPCs in the game that can hit you on the ground like this, and they almost killed me. Once I'm finally able to get back up, one yeets his pot at me, and this is the run's first death. Wait a minute. I'm still alive? Not wanting to squander this stroke of luck, I head into the sewer, up the ladder, and it's finally time to rescue... Okay, so because Egon here is also tripled, Irina Cell is actually blocked, and I'm forced to use no clip to talk to her. Afterward, I spoke to Egon, and apparently he's never met Artorius before, and he was pretty excited to meet a living legend. After opening the doors and being greeted by Sigurd, Old friend. and Old friend. I head up the elevator and staircase to try to make peace, but I'm denied. From there, I head back down, and Sigurd and I take on the fire demons. Old friend. Sigurd is a really good tank. He can take a beating, and his sacred oath miracle increases all damage and absorption by 10%. Each of the demons has 5,509 HP on max new game difficulty and their defenses aren't too impressive, with the exception of fire, of course. Fun fact, they actually have more poise than Gale, so staggering them isn't too easy. They can be fooled by alluring skulls and charmed with rapport. I'm planning on doing a beating Dark Souls 3 run as a fire demon and as a boreal knight, so keep an eye out for those. I feel like playing as these guys would be really fun. Moving on though, after beating these guys, it is very apparent that Sigurd still has some fight left in him, so he and I team up and clear out the hollows from this map. I head downstairs and interrupt something I probably shouldn't have seen. As I'm fighting the Boreal Knights, it is more important than ever not to get comboed by them because the Frostbite stacks very quickly. Unlike Vort, these guys are extremely fast, and once you get hit by one, it is very easy for this fight to snowball. I defeat the final Boreal Knight and activate the bonfire and if you thought this episode was crazy, wait until you see the crabs in the swamp. 